Are you looking for a travel trailer with bunk beds included? Well, stick around, folks. We found some awesome floor plans. You're going to want to check these out. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to the RV Blogger YouTube channel and hit the notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when we put out a new video. And we also invite you to check out our website called rvblogger.com where we have hundreds of helpful articles all about RVing as well. But without any further ado, let's get started with our review of travel trailers with bunk beds. This travel trailer is the Jayco J Flight model number 154BH. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 2,615 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 925 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 3,540 pounds. The hitch weight is just 250 pounds. It measures in at 18 feet even, and it can sleep up to four people. When you first walk inside this travel trailer on the right hand side, you'll notice a big spacious dinette, which also serves as your bed. Then you come into the kitchen area. And then on my right, we have bunks. And just behind me here is where the bathroom is located. Now, when I first walk into this travel trailer, the first thing that comes to my mind is, wow, this is a perfect camper for a beginner. It's small, it's light, it doesn't have any slide outs and uh, it'd be very very easy to get started camping in a smaller camper this size now on my right hand side is where the dinette is located and this is one of the bigger dinettes that you'll find in a camper and the table's a little bit low to my liking but once you're in here I mean, you could easily sit four people in here very very comfortably i mean you really won't be banging elbows with your neighbor for sure it's possible you could get a fifth person here, but I would say four very, very comfortably. Now, this also serves as a bed in here. And so the table will drop down and the dinette itself will convert over into a bed. And if you do that, let's see what size bed you will end up with. So if we measure across, you're at 80 inches. And then the width of this is about 55 inches. So just shy of a residential size queen bed, but it is considered a full size bed. Is that right, honey? Not a twin, but a full. Right. I got it right. There we go. Now, the another nice thing about this setup is this table is a standalone table. So you can move it however you want when it's not in use. You could even take the table and put it outside and use it there if you would like to. If it were me, I would probably just get the bed set up. And if it's a nice weekend, leave it set up as a bed the whole time so you're not making it and unmaking it every day twice a day um, but anyway it's a great little setup for a beginner camper now up top here you've got a big open storage area all the way across that you can access through these two doors and then there are a couple of usb ports but they're a little bit behind this cushion but they're still available so if you're sitting here at your dinette you need to recharge your phone or even plug in your computer, you can do that. There's also a receptacle on the side of this cabinet, which is very handy as well, so you can plug in your computers. And then finally, there's storage under one of the dinette benches here. You can lift up the plywood underneath and access that entire area. In addition to that, there's an outlet on this dinette bench as well, so you can plug in from both sides very, very conveniently. So right across from your dinette area is, I guess we would call this a bit of an entertainment area. You could mount your TV up here. All of your receptacle and cable pre-wiring is all done for you here. So that works out very, very conveniently. Below that, you've got a little bit of open storage and then you have even more storage in this cabinet. Now the kitchen in here is very compact, but efficient. I like the way it's laid out. Up top here, you have a nice big space for storage items. Then you've got a regular microwave oven here. Down below that, you have a two burner cooktop stove. And then next to that, it's got a small kitchen sink. I wish it was a little bit bigger and maybe deeper. It'd be hard to wash larger pots and pans in here, but it certainly serves its purpose. And then you have all this countertop space, which is really fantastic. You could put a coffee pot 
or a toaster up here and there's a receptacle right around the side so you can plug in everything very very easily now the refrigerator down here opens up and it's got a cool looking blue light inside of there it does have a separate freezer area up top which is very convenient and then next to that you've got storage underneath of your kitchen sink now just past the burners and the microwave you've got a pantry cabinet in here now these shelves are not adjustable which is unfortunate but you've got plenty of room for all of your storage there's even another cabinet down below for additional storage and then i see susan wrote a note it's been a long day at the maryland rv show now just across from the kitchen and in the very back of this camper is where the bunks are located now these bunks are whoopsie do my tape measure bent so it's about 76 inches by about 30 inches so you could sleep two adults here or two kids either way now the weight rating on these bunks is 300 pounds but i want to bring something up about bunks just because the weight rating says 300 pounds does not mean you can put 300 pounds of stuff on here all the time the rating that they show you means that's the sleeping capacity so if someone's laying here sleeping whatever they could weigh up to 300 pounds and be fine but you can't store 300 pounds of stuff on these bunks while you're driving up and down the road because as you know trailer is going to be bouncing and all the stuff you store on these bunks is going to be bouncing so you can really only store about 200 pounds worth of stuff to allow for that bouncing to take place because it could break your bunk if you fully load it up to the 300 pound max limit so be aware of that when you're looking at bunk bed capacities while you're shopping around now these bunks have three or four of all of the important elements that we look for in bunk beds they each have their own light they each have their own window for natural light one of the bunks has USB ports and the other has a receptacle. So it works out really well. If the kids are up here, they can plug in with their tablets or phones, watch YouTube videos, whatever they're into. They have the power source that they need for that. And then finally, down below the bottom bunk on one half of the bunk, there is additional storage space. So here I am in the very back of this camper right next to the bunks and this is where the bathroom is located back here. Now this bathroom is a little different than most that we see because it has a little bathtub in it. So if you've got little toddlers and you need to throw them in the bathtub, well boom, here you go. It's actually a decent sized tub for a little kid. Now while you're standing in this shower, as you guys know, my height is 5'11", but inside, when you're standing in here in the skylight, you've got about six feet, eight inches of headroom. The normal headroom throughout the entire camper is about six feet, six inches. So for your taller folks, this camper could work out pretty well for you. Now, while you're in here, you've got multiple places for shampoo and soap in each of the corners. The uh, shower nozzle is a very nice setup. It's, it's a nice big sprayer and it's removable so you can use it as you need. Now this one does come with a shower curtain and more and more we're seeing the manufacturers getting away from the shower curtains and using retractable shower doors instead. We'd sure like to see that in here. We bought a retractable shower door for our Class C. I think it costs what, 60, 70 bucks? Like uh, they're not expensive. Maybe a little higher. Maybe 80 or 90. but. They're less than a hundred bucks. So you could put a you could put one in here yourself. You can order them on Rec Pro and uh, pop it in here yourself. They're really not that hard to install. Uh, outside of the shower and tub is where the commode is located. And I will not pass the elbow test on this side, but I will pass it on that side. One other thing to note in this bathroom is that there is no sink in here, and so you'd have to wash your hands, I guess, in the kitchen sink. Now this is a debate that rages on when people watch our videos. Let us know in the comments below what you think about either having a sink or not having a sink in your bathroom and if that's okay or can you use the kitchen sink or not? Like, is it gross not to have a sink in here? I don't know. The debate rages on. It also rages in, on in our private Facebook group called RV Camping for Newbies. So if you'd like to join that group and jump in on the argument there, you're more than welcome to do that too.
This travel trailer is the Jayco J Flight model number 184BS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,460 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,080 pounds, for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,500 pounds. The hitch weight is 375 pounds. It measures in at 20 feet 8 inches long, and it can sleep up to six people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side is where the owner's bed is located. Then it wraps around to the dinette and the kitchen area. To my left is where the bunks are located and right behind me is where the bathroom is. So here I am walking in through the front door and you'll notice off to my right hand side we have a bed that runs from side to side inside this camper. So how big is it? Well, it is about 80 inches by 60 inches wide. So this is a full residential queen size bed that's in here. Now you've got a window on each side of the bed so you can get a nice little cross breeze in here. Up above, you've got three storage areas, two towards the front and one on the side. And then towards the head of the bed, there's a couple of USB ports as well. We can also lift up the mattress and underneath of this bed, there's lots and lots of storage space. So here I am at the dinette, and the dinette is located in a little slide out, so it does help give some extra floor space inside this camper. You could seat four people here pretty comfortably, I think, although the, the booths really aren't that comfortable themselves. The backs sort of are too straight up and down for my liking. But, um, you know, overall, you could squeeze four people in here and be okay. It's got a decent sized window over top of the dinette, and this table will drop down and create another bed. Now there's one feature about this dinette that's on a slide out that I really don't like, and that is that it sits up really high. Um, I mean, you have to step up, gosh, 13 inches just to be able to get your feet up and in here. And then it also has carpet on the floor instead of linoleum under the kitchen table or under the dinette table. So if you spill anything down there, it's going to stain. Um, but there is a drawer down here for extra storage that you can find. And also, if we did turn this into a bed, you would have approximately, I would call it 58 inches by 40 inches for a child, a small child, to be able to sleep here. So here I am at the kitchen area right across from the dinette, and this is what we call an inline kitchen because all of your kitchen appliances are right in one line. It's a very efficient and uh, easy to use kind of kitchen setup. Now up above here, you've got your radio panel, then you've got some storage, and then you have your microwave oven. Down below that, you've got a two burner cooktop, which they put in front and back style to allow for more countertop space. They put a small sink in here. I really wish this sink was larger. That's just not big enough to wash pots and pans and things like that, in my opinion. But they did do a great job on countertop space. I would have rather have seen a little bit bigger sink and you still have some countertop space left over. Now, below that, you do have some storage underneath of your kitchen sink and plenty of it. And then beyond that, we have our refrigerator. Now, this is a really good size fridge. It's nice and big and deep because it's a 12 volt refrigerator. So it runs on a compressor rather than running on your propane. It'll run off your battery. Uh, and these are fantastic fridges. Here we are by the bunk beds back here, and Jayco did something pretty cool. They have two sleeping capacities on here for the top bunk. When you're sleeping on here, it can handle 300 pounds of sleeping capacity, so believe it or not, I could actually sleep up on this bunk. But when you're storing things back here, it can only hold 200 pounds, and the reason for that is when this camper is bouncing down the road, when you're traveling and you have things stored up here, that 200 pounds you know, gets heavy fast and it could actually break the bunk. So you want to be careful if you store things up here to mind your weight limits. There's a little handle here. So whoever's climbing up here would climb up on the bottom bunk and then they could use the handle to pull themselves up in here. There is a window, a light and two USB ports, which is great. If a kid's sleeping up here, they can recharge their phone, their tablet, whatever they're playing on. Down below, a nice big bunk with its own window, light, no USBs, but it does have a receptacle down here so you can plug in and charge things that way and also for the top bunk if you need a receptacle just reach right around the corner and it's right here so here i am in the bathroom standing in the shower and let's see how much headroom we have here i'm going to guess it's around 
six four, maybe six five, but let's see. Bam! Six feet four inches. I nailed it. Decent amount of headroom for you taller folks. Now the bathroom in here has a nice surround built in. It's got corner shelves actually on both corners, which is a nice feature. You can store your shampoo and soaps and things like that. And I'm also standing in a tub. Uh, so if you have little kids that take a bath, this will be perfect. There is a bit of a step up, but gosh, it's about 17 inches to get up and over and into the tub. And then finally, we have a little mirror here. There's no medicine cabinet or really any storage in the bathroom at all. Or sink. And there's no sink either. You'll have to use your kitchen sink to wash your hands. And um, that's not bad because if, if they tried to jam a sink in here, it just would not work. As far as the elbow test goes, not so great on that side. Perfectly fine on that side. This travel trailer is the Palomino Puma model number 16 BHX. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,144 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 726 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 3,870 pounds. The hitch weight on this trailer is 370 pounds and it measures in at just 21 feet 6 inches long and it can sleep up to 5 people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side is where your bed is located. Then we wrap on around into the dinette and kitchen area. To my left and your right is where the bunks are located and behind me here is where the bathroom is located. Now when I first walk into this travel trailer my first thought is that this is a great size small camper for a small family to go camping. I mean, you've got your bed, you've got your bunks. It's really set up very, very well. The other thing I really like about it is the lighter color of cabinetry that's in here. It just makes things feel very bright, light, and open. Now, on my right-hand side is where the owner's bed is located. Let's see how big this bed is. There's a little headboard behind these pillows. So let me make sure I measure this correctly. And this mattress is about 74 inches by uh, 60 inches wide. So it would be considered a short queen size bed for sure. Now at the head of the bed, you'll notice there's a little ledge there and there is a little bit of storage down underneath of that. So you could put your phone there at night to charge it up. There are a couple of receptacles and USB ports on the side of the bed as well, so everything is conveniently located for you. You'll also notice that there's a nice big window up front, plus one on the side, and you can enjoy a little bit of extra light in here during the daytime. You can close up your shades at night so you can go to sleep. There's also a light here that turns on or off at the bed location, so that's nice and convenient. And then up top here, plenty of storage overhead for all your clothes and such. And then finally, right over my shoulder here is where you would mount your TV on the wall. All of your receptacle, cable, uh, HDMI, all that stuff is roughed in and ready for you to go so you can lay, a bed, lay in bed at night, relax and watch TV as you drift off to sleep. One other nice feature with this bed is that it lifts right up. You have full access underneath the bed and there's also a storage compartment outside to access your storage from there too. Now the kitchen area in here is all in line. All of your kitchen appliances and fixtures are all in one line. So it's a great little setup. Starting from the top, I really like the style of these cabinet doors. They've got a little inset at the bottom, a little glass inset at the top. It's kind of a country feel. And when you open up the cabinet, you have plenty of storage inside of here. Just to the right of that, we have our microwave oven. And then down below that, we have a two burner range. And I really like how they've stacked it from front to back instead of setting it side to side because it gives you more countertop space in here. And then finally, we have a small kitchen sink in here with a gooseneck faucet. I really don't like these style of sinks. In my opinion, they're just a little too small and they're not really deep enough. If I was going to wash dishes in this sink, I'd have water everywhere and Susan would probably kill me. But anyway. As we move on, down below the kitchen sink, you've got a ton of storage underneath and in this cabinet. And then you've got a couple of small drawers that pull out for all of your kitchen utensils. You'll also notice right above the drawers that you do have a receptacle here 
So if you had a coffee pot or a toaster up on the countertop, you could plug it in right here. And then finally, there's even more storage underneath of the cooktop. Now, just past the microwave and the cooktop is where the refrigerator is located. And this fridge is a very good size for this size travel trailer or any travel trailer for that matter. This is also a 12 volt refrigerator, which means that it runs off of shore power or a battery. And more and more often we're seeing these 12 volt fridges uh, in trailers these days rather than using the old absorption style fridges that require you to use propane or shore power to keep them cold. Now down below the refrigerator, there's also a couple more cabinet doors that open and you have plenty of storage under there as well. Now here I am sitting at the dinette and this dinette is big enough to seat two people very comfortably and that's about it. No more space for anyone else, but that's okay. Above the dinette table, you've got a really nice size window here. You also have a light that you can turn on at this location. And then there's additional storage cabinetry, plus open storage and all of your stereo controls are up there as well. I also wanna point out that underneath each dinette booth, you can remove the cushion, pull up a piece of plywood that's there and access the storage under each of the dinette booths. Now this table will drop down and you can make this into another bed. But before I talk about that, I just wanna bring up the poles under the table. There's two of them that to hold this table in place and there's just not a lot of room under here. So I kinda of wish they went with a legless dinette table here and that way you'd have a little more foot space under the dinette. Now, when you do drop the dinette down and convert this into a bed, you could sleep somebody in here because this bed would be, gosh, about five feet, six inches long by about 28 inches wide. So it's big enough for maybe one child to be able to sleep there. Now, behind the dinette location is where the bunks are. Now, each of these bunks has a 300 pound capacity on it. And as you know, when we look at bunk beds, we look for four elements. We look for a window, we look for a light, we wanna see USB chargers and a electrical receptacle. This top bunk has three out of the four of those features. The only thing it's missing is an electrical receptacle. But honestly, if you've got the USB hookups, uh, you're good to go. Your kid can lay up here, they can have their phone or their tablet, plug it in and be good to go for the night. Down below, we have two out of four of those features. It does have its own light, and it also has USB ports, but there is no window down here, and there's also no receptacle. So here I am standing in the bathroom, and as usual, I'm standing in the shower location. And as you guys know, I'm five feet 11. Now, if I stand up all the way, my head is just touching the ceiling. Uh, but in the skylight area, you would have, eh, you know, six feet, four inches of height in there, but it's only in this spot right here. So it's kind of a different kind of setup. I think they should have probably taken the skylight and turned it so it runs the whole width of the shower. The reason I say that is because bathtubs and showers in travel trailers are usually four to six inches higher than the floor. That's why you lose your head height in your shower. That's why I always measure my height in the shower. It's an important measurement to know and manufacturers install skylights over the shower to accommodate for the loss of headroom. But in this case, I don't think they put the skylight on the wrong way. They should have put it so it went over the entire shower. Anyway, all that being said, this shower has a very nice surround. It's, it's a heavy plastic material. And in the back corner here, you've got three shelves for shampoo and soap and all that good stuff. Now, one other neat little feature about this shower is that it's also a bathtub. So if you have a couple of little toddlers that like to take baths in the evening, you can stick them in here, wash them up, and they are good to go for the next day. Now, right outside of the shower is the commode. And sitting on this commode, you'll notice one thing about this bathroom. There's no sink in here. And this is a huge area of debate on our YouTube videos and also in our Facebook group called RV Camping for Newbies, which we enjoy, invite you to join in on the discussion there. But there are a lot of people that are very passionate about, hey, every bathroom has to have a sink so you can wash your hands. Washing your hands in the kitchen sink is disgusting. Well, some people feel that way and other people are like, no, what are you talking about? You're camping anyway. You know, what's the difference? Wash your hands in the kitchen sink. Let us know in the comments down below 
which way you feel about this very, very controversial issue. Now, anyway, when I'm sitting here on the toilet, one thing to note is this is your toilet paper holder. It's kind of like right here, like here it is. So there you go. And as far as the elbow test goes in here, no way I'm passing it on that side, but over here, I've got plenty of room. Let us know which one of these travel trailers with bunk beds you liked best and why in the comments down below. And if you wanna check out some more awesome travel trailers with bunk beds, just click the video down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video. You ready? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't get a cue.